everybody and welcome to Museum Munchkins. I'm Mr. Nick and today we are talking all about otters and we're gonna start off by singing an otter song called Look at the Otter if you guys want to stand up on your feet. All right now I'm gonna need a little bit of your help today while we're singing this song. There are some really fun motions that we're gonna do and I need to see if you can follow along with those dances. So we're gonna, let's learn some dances, some otter dancing, and then we're gonna play our song really slow to start so we can practice doing our dancing moves along with it. And then we'll see if we can play at normal speed, okay? So in this song, otters are long, skinny animals, and when they're on land, they really like to wiggle and jiggle. Can you guys do some wiggling and jiggling and jumping? They like to do those. They like to dive down under the water and then pop right back up. They like to do that. They like to juggle. Can you go like this? Pretend like you're juggling. Awesome. And they like to splash. How would you make a splashing motion? Maybe like, like you're splashing your hands in the water. And they like to climb up riverbanks and then slide down the mud. So we're going to practice doing those different otter dances while we sing this song, Look at the Otter. Are you ready? All right, here we go. <clears throat> hey, hey, look at the otter playing in the water, swimming in the sun. Hey, hey, look at the otter, playing in the water, having so much fun. Okay, are you ready? Go, otter, go. Wiggle, wiggle, jiggle, and jump. Very good. Go, otter, go. Dive right down and pop right up. Juggle and splash all around. Can you do that juggling? Play, otter, play. Climb up the bank. Can you climb up the bank? And slide right down. I know how the otter loves to play. You can hear everybody say. Are you ready to do it again? Here we go. Hey, hey. Otter, playing in the water, splashing in the sun. Hey, hey, look at the otter, playing in the water, having so much fun. Are you ready to dance? Go, otter, go. Wiggle, wiggle, jiggle, and jump. Go, otter, go. Dive right down and pop right up. Play, otter. Juggle and splash all around. Play, otter, play. Climb up the bank and slide right down. And oh, how the otter loves to play. You can hear everybody say, Hey, hey, look at the otter playing in the water, splashing in the sun. Hey, hey, look at the otter playing in the water, having so much fun. Can we do the dances one more time? Are you ready? Go, water, go. Wiggle, 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 and jump. Go, water, go. Dive right down and pop right up. Play, water, play. Juggle and splash all around. Play, water, play. Climb up the bank and slide right down. And oh, how the otter loves to play. You can hear everybody say, Hey, hey, look at the otter playing in the water, splashing in the sun. Hey, hey, look at the otter playing in the water, having so much fun. Awesome otter dancing, you guys! Oh, you guys did such a good job 
with all that otter dancing. Yes, like I said today, today we're learning all about otters. Has anyone ever seen an otter before? Have you ever seen an otter before? Can you raise your hand? Well, otters actually have really short arms. Can you raise your hand? If you've ever seen an otter before? Yeah, so there are lots of different types of otters that live on our planet. In fact, there are 13 different types of otters that live on our planet. Can you count all the way to 13? Can we do that together? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There are thirteen different types of otters that live on our planet. We're going to kind of talk about two of them today. The two that we maybe hear about or see most commonly around in like movies and books and TV shows and or maybe even in your backyard because otters do live around here in Kenosha. Around here in Kenosha, we find an otter that looks kind of like this. This is called a North American river otter because can you guess where they live? The river. They love to live in rivers and streams. That's where they like to live. And they have these long, skinny bodies. You can see how long and skinny this otter is. And they have kind of this big, muscular tail that helps them to swim. And they have two short little arms and two short little legs. And now this might look, this otter might look like another animal you might have seen before or heard about before. And that is a weasel because otters are actually in the same family of animals as weasels so that's pretty interesting they're kind of like aquatic uh, weasels they live in the water they like to play around in the water so um, otters are really interesting animals and otters because they're weasels um, they are carnivores can you guys all say that word with me carnivore very good, yeah, and a carnivore is an animal that likes to eat meat. They like to eat other animals. And uh, otters have lots of different foods that they like to eat. They like to eat fish. That's one of their favorite foods is fish. Does anyone like eating fish? And they like to eat crayfish. Have you ever had that before? It's kind of like a little tiny lobster. And they like to eat crabs. And sea urchins. Have you ever eaten a sea urchin before with those long spines on them? And shellfish, like oysters and clams, and a really fun one to say, abalones. Can you say that word? Abalone. Kind of sounds like the word baloney, like a bologna and cheese sandwich. Do you think otters might like to eat a uh, abalone and cheese sandwich? I don't think so. They will just take the abalones, and those are a type of sea snail that they really like to eat. And otters, they have those, so uh, shellfish like oysters and clams and abalones and even those sea urchins like we said before have these really hard outsides on their bodies, but that doesn't bother otters because they can do something really interesting. Otters really love to grab those animals from down off the ocean floor. Sea otters do. River otters don't live in the ocean, but they will grab those, that food from down in the bottom of the ocean, and then they'll swim back up to the surface of the ocean and float on their backs, and then they'll put their food on their stomachs, on their tummies, and they'll take a rock, a special rock. Every otter has a special rock that they keep in a pouch in their skin. That's pretty fun. And they, they will take the rock, and they'll smash the shells open with the rocks. They're one of the very few animals besides humans that can actually use tools to help them eat their food, which is pretty interesting. Not many animals do that. And they all, like I said, they all have their own very special rock that they keep in a pouch in their skin that helps them to do that. And another thing that helps them when they're, when they're swimming around looking for food is if we take a closer look at this otter, Okay, what you can you see these things that are sticking off the side of the otter's face? These are called its whiskers. Maybe you have a cat at home that has whiskers or a dog that has whiskers. 
And otters use those whiskers when they're swimming around. They'll, those whiskers will touch food that they're looking for, or they'll touch like, well, they'll, they can find holes um, down in the mud. When the water is really dark or muddy and they can't see where they're going with their eyes, they can use their whiskers to help them tell where they're going and if there's any food around. So those whiskers are really, really important for, uh, for the otters. And if we look at their bodies, you can see that their bodies are covered in fur, aren't they? Do you have any fur on your body? Well, we have some hair maybe on our arms and on our heads, but what's really interesting is that otter's fur is so thick that just in one little tiny square about that size, an otter has more hair on its body than you have on, on, in that one little square than you have on your whole head. They have tons of hair, and their hair is really, really thick fur to help keep their bodies warm and to help keep them waterproof while they're swimming around um, in the water looking for their food or maybe just playing around because otters are really love, really love to play. They're really playful animals. And otters are another really important thing called a keystone species. Can you guys say that? That's kind of two long words to say. Can you say that those words with me? Keystone species. How about, can we say them really quiet? Keystone species. How about, can we say them really loud? Keystone species. And a keystone species is an animal or a plant that even though they might look small or you might think like, oh, it would like, that's a, they're just one part of this whole big uh, environment that they live in. A keystone species is one that's really, really important for their environment. So for example, otters where they live, the sea otters where they live, if the sea otters didn't live in the water where they do, like out in California and on the west coast of North America, then all the sea urchins that live there would chew up the roots of all the big, tall kelp forests that live there, and then the kelp would float away, and they would chew down all those big kelp forests, those underwater forests, and then all the animals and plants and things that survive on those kelp forests, they would all be in big trouble. So with the otters there, though, they eat enough of the sea urchins that the kelp forests can stick around and the sea urchins don't eat all of them. That's why they're called a keystone species. That's kind of fun to think about, huh, isn't it? How something so little can make such a big difference. Yeah, and we can think about that too with us. Like, have you ever shared a toy with your brother or your sister? Or maybe a friend? Or maybe you said thank you when somebody did something nice for you? Or maybe you played a game with your friend and you even let them pick which game they wanted to play instead of playing the game that maybe you wanted to play. Those are really little things that can make such a big difference for someone, just like otters make such a big difference in the environments where they live. And they're very, very playful animals, like we said. They love, like we said in our song, they love to splash and play, and they like to play tag. Does anyone here like to play tag? I like to play tag sometimes, too. And they like to juggle. Can you juggle? Do you know anybody who can juggle? Yeah, my brother-in-law is really good at juggling. I don't know how to juggle yet, but he says he'll teach me how to juggle. But otters love to get rocks, and they'll juggle them around like that just for fun just to get practice holding on to those rocks. And they really love climbing up riverbeds. The, the American, North American river otter especially, likes to climb up riverbeds and then just slide down the mud back into the water just for fun. Does that sound like fun to you? Yeah, otters love to play. And another thing that otters really love to do is sea otters especially, because they live in the water basically all the time. They swim around in the water, they play in the water, they eat in the water, and they even sleep in the water. So sea otters, because they sleep in the water, they also really like to hold hands. And they like to hold hands with each other so that while they're sleeping, one of them doesn't float off into the ocean. So they'll, they'll hold, they'll, when, they're, when they're getting ready for bed, they'll wrap themselves up in that kelp, 
that we talked about the kelp forest where they live. They'll wrap themselves up in a cuddly kelp blanket. Maybe you have a cuddly blanket you like to wrap up in when you go to sleep or when you take a nap. And then they'll hold hands with the otters next to them so that they don't float away. And we call that a raft, a raft of otters. And in fact, the biggest raft of otters that scientists ever saw was over two thousand otters all holding hands together. That sounds pretty cute, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so too. And in fact, I brought a story today about an otter who loved to hold hands. So let's read this story together now. Yep, so this story is called The Otter Who Loved to Hold Hands. All right. Every night when they go to sleep, Otto's family holds hands so they don't drift apart. And every morning when they wake up, they all let go again, except for Otto. Otto worried about swimming. He worried about diving, and he worried about getting lost. But most of all, he worried about being alone. Every morning, Mom said, please let go, Otto. I can't do anything with you holding my hand. But Otto shook his head. He did not want to let go. I can't swim on my own, he squealed, clinging on to Mom. He knew he would float, but letting go was still scary. What if he drifted out to sea? You can do it, Mom said gently. But Otto shook his head. He didn't want to let go. The other cubs enjoyed playing and chasing and splashing. Otto wanted to join in, but he just couldn't let go of mom and dad. Go and play, said dad. I'll watch you from here. But Otto shook his head. He didn't want to let go. I'm scared, Otto cried. Don't let go, Otto begged as mom tried to open an oyster shell. But I'm right here, mom sighed. But Otto just had to hold on. Mom and the shell bobbed and rocked as Otto clung on to her. Oh, looks like the mom is having kind of a hard time opening those shells. When mom finally opened the oyster shell, Otto saw a beautiful, shiny pearl gleaming inside. It's amazing, Otto said. Oh, look, there's an otter inside just like me. Otto reached out to the little otter in the pearl, and before he knew it, he was holding the beautiful pearl in both his hands. Otto saw a happy otter floating all by himself and realized it was him. We're so proud of you, Mom said. Well done, Dad said. I let go, Otto cried. I'm floating on my own, and I'm fine. Hooray, come and play with us, called all the other little otters. So now every day, Otto splashes and swims and plays with his friends. He's a very happy little otter. But he still looks forward to nighttime when he and his family hold hands as they drift off to sleep. Oh, and look, you can see little bits of that green kelp that they wrap themselves up in. The end. That was a pretty fun book about Otto the otter who loves to hold hands. All right, and now would you guys like to make a craft with me? I brought a special craft for us to do today. Let me just pull out my cart here, and I'm also going to answer some of your questions while we get started on our craft that we're going we're gonna to make today. So to, for today's craft, we need just a couple things. We're going to make some otter bags. Since otters have that pouch in their belly that they like to hold their rocks inside, we're going to make a special bag that you can carry your favorite things around with, or you could just use it as a cute little otter puppet. That works too. But we're going to need a few things. We're going to need one brown paper bag, or maybe if we don't have any of these at home, maybe you have like a sparkly gift bag or something that we could use to make this. But you're going to need one little bag. 
We're gonna need one sheet of white paper. We're gonna need one sheet of brown paper. We're going to need some scissors to cut out our papers with, a marker so I can draw with, or maybe you wanna use a pencil or a crayon. Either one, is, any of those are fine. I'm just gonna use this marker because it's a little bit better for you guys to be able to see. And a glue stick to put everything together when we're all done. So let's start off by, we're going to take our brown piece of paper and I'm going to cut it in one, two long strips like this. And I've got kind of this wider piece and I'm gonna cut this piece right in half like this. Cut, 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 cut. Perfect, so now instead of one piece of brown paper, I have two kind of uh, rec big rectangles and two long skinny rectangles. All right. And I'm gonna take these long skinny ones and fold them in half. And I'm gonna use those to make our feet and hands for our otter. But first, before I start doing that, let's take a look at some of the questions we've got. So Ollie would like to know, what kind of predators do otters have? Do you know that word, predator? So a predator is an animal that likes to eat other animals. So Ollie wants to know what kind of animals like to eat otters. That's a very good question. Well, lots of otters live in places where like sea otters live in places where there aren't many other animals big enough to actually eat them around. Um, so I'm gonna take these two and I'm gonna draw a foot on one and an arm on the other for my otters. And while I'm gonna keep answering the question while I do that. <clears throat> so otters live in places where there aren't usually a lot of predators, but sea otters and animals that live uh, in the ocean or otters that live by the ocean, have to worry about bigger seals and sea lions where they live and um, other otters that live around here like the, a, the river otter they have to maybe worry more about like uh, wolves and coyotes bigger animals that could catch them if they were ever on land they're pretty fast and and uh, are easy, can get away easily in the water but when they're on land, they're kind of a little awkward running around because they're built more for swimming around in the water. So in the oceans and uh, where the sea otters live, they have to worry about bigger animals, maybe make maybe even sharks sometimes, um, or killer whales, like orcas, or they have to worry about um, wolves and coyotes and things like that around here. All right, so I've got my arm drawn on this one and my foot drawn on this one. And look, and since I folded my paper in half, when I cut out this foot, I'll end up with two feet. And when I cut out this arm, I'll end up with two arms. Perfect, exactly what I'll need. On my other two pieces of brown paper, on one of them, I'm going to draw kind of a long, skinny triangle like this. And that's gonna be the otter's tail. And then on this one, I'm gonna draw kind of a kidney bean shape. You ever eat kidney beans before? We're gonna draw a shape kind of like a kidney bean. And then I'm gonna make a little nose and some whiskers, because those whiskers are important, right? On this one too, so I've got that tail and my mouth with the nose and whiskers on it. Perfect, okay, now all my, I just need to cut these out. But before I cut that out, I'm gonna take my white paper and I'm gonna cut out two squares. Okay. And now on one of those squares, I'm going to draw some eyes for my otter. I'm gonna make two circles. And then I'm gonna make some black circles in the middle. Although I like to leave, when I'm making my eyeballs, I like to leave 
a little kind of space like that on the, on the black circle on the inside, and that makes it look like their eyes are a little bit shiny. Kind of looks like a hungry caterpillar took a bite out of the middle of their eye, doesn't it? So I'm gonna put that aside. And then on the other piece, I'm going to draw something that my otter might like to eat. And I'm gonna draw a big oyster shell for my otter to eat. Perfect. All right, now we're gonna need to cut those out, but before we do that, let's answer another question. So Noelle wants to know what sound otters make. Oh, that is a very good question. So sometimes <clears throat> when, we, when, or when we think about otters, otters kind of make two noises that are really easy for us to recognize. So when otters are really big and strong and they're like moms and dad otters, Big otters kind of make a barking sound, kind of like a dog. Can you make a barking sound? Kind of like a arr, 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 arr. That's kind of the noise that big otters make. But when otters are little babies, their voices are a little bit higher. And so they sound a little bit more like seagulls, actually. Do you know what sound a seagull makes? Yeah, so seagulls kind of make a oh, 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 sound. So it still sounds a little bit like barking, but it's a little bit higher. So now I just need to cut out all of these pieces for us to put together our craft for today. Okay, so I'm gonna cut out my shell, and I'm gonna cut out those eyes, and while we work on cutting those things out, let's answer another question. Aiden would like to know what animals are friends with otters? Ooh, that's a good question. So otters haven't really been observed in the wild. That means when scientists go out to watch them, they haven't really been observed in the wild as playing with a lot of other animals, um, but they really enjoy playing with all of their otter friends. <coughs> so, um, they like to, um, like we said, said, they like to play, they like to splish and splash around um, on the riverbanks and stuff with their otter friends. And they like to uh, play tag and chase each other around. So they don't play so much with other animals, but we do find them around other animals and lots of like little tiny animals. Um, that live in kelp forests for sea otters um, are really happy that otters are around. So maybe that's kind of, if we think about friends like that, maybe just somebody that you're happy is around. There are lots of animals that are happy that the otters are around in those kelp forests. Because do you remember what we called them? A keystone species. That's right. So since they're a keystone species, lots of animals are really happy that they're around. All right, I've just got to finish cutting out my arms and my feet. Perfect. Let's cut these out real quick. Snip, 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 snip. All right. All right, so now I've got my pieces here. Ooh, there goes my, my eyeballs. <clears throat> and I've just got to put everything together. So I've got all my pieces here, and I've just got to put everything together. So I'm going to start off with this big otter mouth. Let's put that on my bag first. So I'm gonna take my bag and I'm going to put my otter mouth up here on the top. Kind of on the top where it folds. And that way if later I decide, oh, I don't wanna keep anything in my otter bag, instead I'd rather play with it as an otter puppet, I can do that. And then I'm gonna take one eyeball and two eyeballs. Kind of glue those on there like that. Perfect, all right, next thing. I'm going to flip my bag over, so I'm not gonna go on this side, I'm gonna go on this side now. And I'm gonna glue on my otter tail. So I just need a little bit of glue up here at the top. And I'm gonna stick that right down here on the bottom like this. So you've got a little bit of a tail. So see that when I flip him over, he's got a tail in his face. All right, and I just need to add his feet. So I've got my two feet here, my two little otter feet. 
We're going to put some glue on those otter feet. Their feet are really good at kicking and helping them swim around in the water. When they swim, they kind of hold their front paws to their chest like this while they're swimming, and then they'll use their tail and their strong back feet to help them swim. Perfect, so now my otter's got two little feet like that. And now I just need to add some little otter hands. So I'm gonna put some otter hands, but I'm only putting glue on the back of his arm here. I'm not gonna put any glue on the hand part. And you'll see why in a second. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on the arm, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on this arm over here. Perfect, there we go. So now we've got our cute little otter here. Oh, but he's missing one thing. Do you remember what other thing I made for my otter that I didn't add to my puppet yet or to my bag yet? Yeah, he needs something to eat. So I've got my oyster shell and I'm just going to look at, since I didn't put any glue on his hands, I can just slide that in there for him. And then if he wants to, we can take that out of his paws and help him eat it then if we don't want to, or we can make other things for him to eat too, like crabs and fish. We can put a lot, make lots of things to put in his hands. Perfect, so that's our craft for today. Thank you guys so much for joining us today with Museum at Museum Munchkins. Next week, we are going to be talking all about gray foxes. So maybe you might have heard of a red fox before, but we're going to be learning about gray foxes. And I just wanted to take a minute here at the end of our show to thank everybody who last week after our show made a donation to the museum. We really, really appreciate that. And if that's something that you're interested in doing this week, um, like I said last week, our mission is still going on even though we're closed. We're still trying our best to bring you guys really fun educational programs. And if you would like to make a donation to the Public Museum um, while, we're, uh, while we're closed right now, um, you can certainly do that um, by visiting our, our website at kenoshapublicmuseum.org and clicking the donate button at the top of the screen. Thanks so much for visiting with us today, you guys, and we'll see you next week.